gaming. It's been about for many years, from arcades to home consoles to £10,000 PCs. It's really not a cheap hobby, but there's games for all price ranges, from free games to monthly free games through services like PlayStation Plus and Xbox Game Pass, to games for 99p, to games like Poop Slinger that's worth £15,000. So I decided to get three Platinums on three different valued games. One at £1, one at £10, and one at £100. The first challenge is finding a game valued at each of those prices, but there were some rules, no special editions, and no discounts. Just one game valued at a pound, one game valued at a tenner, and one game valued at a hundred pound. And yes, I really did spend 111 pound on this video, so please hit that like button. All right, first things first, we need to filter by under a pound and to a pound to two quid, and then go from price of high to low. So these are the two quidders. My god, look how many of the games are called the jumping. Insane. Alright, here we are. This is the 99p mark. So how many have we got to one pound? Okay, we haven't got many to actually work with. Alright, I think we're gonna go for the 99p ones. There's only one at one pound nine p. Um does it matter? Perry Pig Jump, maybe? <laughs> I'm actually not going to go with any of the games that are on offer, because technically this game is worth £2.50. So I'm going to go with one of these three, and as this is the only one on PS5, let's go with that. Astro and Susie go to the peach. 99p well spent. Oh my god. This actually looks awful. Alright, we've got a trophy. Hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. Okay, I'm not allowed to touch the mayo, apparently. Okay. <laughs> the epitome of one pound games. Okay, I've got a trophy, hot dog. Ate your first hot dog. Okay, now this is gameplay. Oh, I see, so ketchup is fine. So mayo is just not allowed. But ketchup is fine. Oh. Novice burger catcher. Okay. Mustard or mouse turd. Okay. Novice burger catcher. Oh, we're at tacos now. And salsa. And another trophy. Now they're coming through. And another trophy. There's actually no pause, by the way, so I physically cannot pause it. Oh, and there's there's two of us now, apparently. Oh, well, that's even more difficult. Semi-pro taco catcher. Semi-pro burger catcher. There we go. Oh, now we're like super fast. Semi-pro hot dog catcher. There we go. Oh, invincible. Okay, yay. Pro taco catcher. Yay. Best taco catcher, yeah. <laughs> Best hot dog catcher ever. Okay, so once you get going, it's just like insane then. And that's the trophy. Okay. Um.
I am ashamed. Now you're probably wondering the same thing I was wondering. How did I go from 17 of 22 trophies to the platinum? Well it turns out I earned 11 trophies in the same 60 second period and apparently broke either the game or the PlayStation trophy counter, so they didn't all pop up. They obviously counted because I got the Platinum, but this is the first time ever that I've seen that many trophies, 11 trophies earned in a 60 second period to where just some of them just don't pop up. So that is how I went from 17 trophies to the Platinum on this horrendous game. So one pound done. It was awful and kind of symbolizes the type of games you can buy and plat for a pound. Now I understand even less why there's people who have 5,000 Platinums, all with games like this, because that just wasn't even fun. I didn't enjoy any second of that. Of course, you can sometimes find a hidden gem for this price, but it's unlikely. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Now, if I would add it to the tier list, I would add it to why, for why did I play that? But now it's time for the £10 Platinum. In my opinion, the best middle ground for price range. You can get some really good games on offer for £10, or even at full price, you can get some really fun indie games for a tenner. But remember, I can't buy games that are on offer for this video. But if you're not weird like me, you can get tons of different choices week after week. The store is constantly changing. £10 is by far the best price range especially if you're on a budget. But then in turn for this video, this was the hardest one to buy a game for, as I quite literally was spoiled by choice. And as I wasn't gonna watch reviews for 75 different games, I was genuinely trying to have to judge a book by its cover and just hope I didn't get another Astro and Susie go to the beach. I'm gonna make the most of this being easy because the next part of this video, I'm not gonna be able to just do it through the store. Man, you can find some weird stuff on this store. Okay, here we are, we are at so we've got 9.99 starts there, and including games on offer, 9.99 keeps going. Oh my God. Okay, it stops here. Okay, so we've got a lot to choose from. I really have no criteria to picking them. I am looking to see if there's a game that I'm thinking, wow, I've always wanted to play that. Counter Spy. Now that is a game I've wanted to play. Amnesia the Bunker. Oh, it's on offer. It goes against the rules. <laughs> oh, no. No, what? Oh, no, that's so disappointing. <sighs> the disappointment you just saw was the fact that I realised Counter Spy, really the only game I actually wanted to play, has no platinum. So it actually took me just shy of about 29 minutes to pick a game to play at this price range. But I did notice something really funny while editing that I completely missed Jump King. Without a doubt the hardest platinum in this price range and I just didn't even notice it until right now when I'm editing the video. It's the only game that's actually caught my eye for some reason. I mean there's a lot of choice, don't get me wrong, there really is a lot of choice and something like Creature in the Well, that might be for you. You know, the art style might really be for you, you know, so there's, there is a lot to choose at this price range. But it's a lot of crap as well. Screw it, we're gonna get it, it's in the cart, let's buy it. £10 game secured. Let's do it baby. Cat Quest, £10 worth of glory. Let's hope we, uh, let's hope this is better than the previous game. Pretty cute art style, I won't lie. Okay, cool attack um, style for the game. Yeah, I like this. I can take a cat nap, that's pretty funny. Game saved. All right, nice. Whoa. <laughs> Opening impressions. It's uh, it's actually somewhat well made, and it's appealing to look at. Hey, first trophy. Uh, fee. Something law located one monument. Or level 8, that's not us quite yet. So the vibe I'm getting from this game, while I think it will be somewhat enjoyable, as long as it is sure and there's not like too much grinding, is it will just be A to B, attack a few enemies, A to B, attack a few enemies, A to B, so on and so forth. Fashionista Kitty, obtain three armour or weapons, nice. Oh wow, the map is humongous. I did not expect that. I thought it was just this little area. Wow. There's a lot of effort put into this game. 
Right, so there's a lot of side quests i got to do to level up, and I don't quite know what else. A lot of caves by the looks of things. And yeah, we're just going to keep playing. I don't really know what the primary focus of this platinum is. I kind of just want to go in blind, really. The game may look silly, but it says you've got a pretty fun platinum to follow. The biggest trophies are for leveling up, dungeons, side quests, and armor slash weapon collection. There are three trophies related to each of them, one bronze for each, one silver for each, and one gold for each. There are other trophies along the way, but those really are the main focus for me, as towards the end they do end up becoming a little bit of a grind. But honestly, it's a lot of fun. Although it's way, way too long, it is fun. But I will say after level 50, it actually becomes quite challenging, which is annoying because the game is very much like... The enemies feel very much like... But then once you get to like level 60, 70, then you just breeze through pretty much every enemy. Okay, we're a good few hours deep, uh, nearly level 80. Honestly, it's been good fun. And the weapon I'm using at the minute is actually quite funny. So out of all these weapons, massive hammers, big swords, I'm using something called willpower, which is just your bare hands. <laughs> and the art style definitely hasn't got boring either, which is always good. Still interesting. Ah, there we go. Located all monuments. Nice. Can we just... All right. I wouldn't mind it so much if there wasn't so much dialogue. It's just constantly like this. I'm having to constantly go through and through. And sometimes I'm pressing X like 30 times. And it's all just for nonsense. Oh, so I beat him. That was under... It's kind of underwhelming. It's just kind of cute. He was just l trying to bring his human back. It's pretty sweet. I mean, it's a repetitive game. Like, n to no end. But... New game unlocked. Uh, complete the main quest. Nice. 50. Let's do it. So this is pretty much what you have to do with the dungeons. You just kill things repeatedly until it says cleared. Definitely a repetitive game. The art style helps because it is super cute. But uh, by no means, like, I'm going to win any awards. I think this might be the last one, but it is level 200 one. But it is just two mimic chests. So I'm relatively confident except for that guy that keeps giving me the business i suppose yeah i got okay okay i absolutely got the business there oh my god it does so much friggin damage oh my god what no 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 come on how is he quicker than me oh that makes me this game should not be making me mad. It's called Cat Quest, and I'm playing as a kitty in armor. Let me just try something. Let me just put this on quickly. Let me just put this on and try something. Because this should put my mana up loads more. This might not work, but we're going to give it a go. Oh, mana build OP, March. No, I was about to... What? I got greedy. Oh, I just... Oh. oh, I got greedy again at the very end. I, th It's just like he's one... It looks like he's one hit away and he don't f***ing die. Okay. 9,999 damage. I wasn't even... Oh. oh, I could just snap it. I could just... Of course, goes to do his little attack and then just fakes him, plasters everything. Dude, what am I? He just won't f***ing die. Oh, that was so difficult. Courage. Is that just me or does that look like... Bras. Like a bra. Just me? Okay. There we go. Dungeon Master. Cleared all 52 dungeons.
God, with this like mana build, if you want to call it that, it's so ridiculous. But there we go. Super Cat Venturer. Uh, that's for 99. We just need to do the one for getting the 66 items. There we go. That's one new weapon. We might... There we go. Fashionista Lion and Le Platinum Trophy. Meow. And that is a... Uh... Oh, a new tier reached. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Now as you saw, you can get a good variety with £10. Now I went for a bit of an odd £10 game, but if you're new to console gaming, there's so many you can get from AAA games on offer to small indie titles that generally are worth playing. And that's just from the store. Let alone pre-owned actual disc games, you can get a whole new world. But for Cat Quest, I'd put it in a C tier. For Cats Are Cute, Games Too Long, Mostly Fetch Quests. But I truly did enjoy it. But now it's time for the moment I was dreading. It was time to look for the £100 game. Remember the rules though, no special edition and no discounts. Oh, this is going to sting. Over 50 quid. Now, this one I actually don't think I'm going to be able to get off the store. Because I don't just... Yeah, so there's actually no physical base game that is going to cost me £100. Yeah, unless I buy the Borderlands Collection Pandora's Box. But this is because it's like a mega special edition that includes multiple games. Does not count. The PlayStation Store is now useless. So with the store being useless as expected, it's time to head over to the PC and find a game somewhere in this world worth £100. Alright, we are over to the PC. It's time to find expensive games. Most expensive. For PS4 games, because not many on the PS5. Here we go. Let's drop it down to number one. What have we got? Da -da -da, Strafe, Night Trap, Res Infinite, Saturday Morning RPG, Godzilla. Da -da -da, poop Slinger. Alright, let's buy that. I reckon it will probably be on eBay. There we go, let's have a look. Oh, it's not on there. Fifteen grand! We're going to pretend that didn't happen. So now let's look for expensive PlayStation games. The first time I'm looking for it. Um, I haven't looked before, so let's look now. Huh, this article could be useful. I've not been on this before. Res Infinite. Let's have a look at Res Infinite PS4. That could be a good one. 90 quid, 95 quid there. Saturday morning RPG PS4 eBay. 95 pound. Uh, sealed limited run games. I am going to open it. This one's actually a hundred quid. Do I spend more just for the sake? <laughs> I don't want to. Why am I doing this? Godzilla. No. Okay. Never mind. Two hundred. No. No. So all right. This is so where it, this is where it gets expensive then. So the game people are valuing the game at a hundred pound. Right, this one is used, not sealed. £98. Well, obviously, I'm not going to show you guys this, but that was very close. I nearly sent it to my old address. That would have been absolutely mortifying if I had done that. Stupid idea this is. Stupid bloody idea. That's a fun way to lose £98. Posters here. I'm growing out my hair. Please don't judge me. Oh. There we go. It's in like a protective plastic film limited run. I'm about to eviscerate the value of this game. Oh. Oh. There we go. All right. Oh. Comes with a sticker. Is this a sticker? Oh, it is a sticker. Okay. So here we go. Saturday morning RPG. I almost don't want to open it, but... Yeah. 
Value destroyed. And there we go. Uh, <laughs> I actually never heard of this game before. So I, I am actually intrigued to play it. But this is what £100 gets you. A limited run game and a sticker that says limited run. Hope that it runs on the PS5. If not, I'm going to cry. Yes! There we go. It runs on the PS5. I probably blurred a lot of this because there's like future games there that I don't want to spoil too much. But there we go. It's copying pretty quick, which is good. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I was very, very nervous that it wasn't going to be uh, available to play on the uh, PS5. I really don't know what to expect. Okay, so there's no like commentary. I have to read it. There's nothing you can do to stop me. You're wrong. You're a bad guy and bad guys never win. Ha 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 ha. Use the touchpad to scratch? What the hell? There's so much going on. I'm just... <laughs> I don't know what to... I don't know what to do or say here. I didn't think it was going to be this style of game. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I thought just based on like this image i thought it was going to be a bit more like 3d art style and now i'm on a skateboard or a back to the future hoverboard i oh, got a, at a time scratch all five stickers before battle oh, okay okay i moonwalked him paralyzed him and moonwalked back should be able to use this and just punch him Now I've run into a bit of a problem. While I carried on with episode 1 and the rest of the story, and honestly I did enjoy it, I generally enjoy the turn-based combat, although sometimes the turn-based combat in this game feels a little bit unfair that you'll see later in this video. Most of the trophies however are missable or chapter specific that you will get a lot later that you'll have to replay for the chapter through a couple of times, things you'll definitely miss the first run, but I did get a good few trophies on my first run through the story. However, while the game is fun, it feels relatively uninspired, so it's not totally exciting to watch. It is a game I would recommend if it was a tenner. If it was fell into the previous category in this video of £10, I'd recommend it. But it's not an overly fun game to watch, which is why I'm not going to be able to do look up tons of battles. There's not a huge variety of enemies throughout the five episodes. I did have fun, mainly because the story is relatively short. But despite the story being short, there are a lot of missable trophies that I'll be getting later on in the video. So, uh, I think we're coming to the end of the final episode. Now, I don't want to sound mean. The turn-based combat is actually fun, but I get why this game didn't sell well. It, it is pretty boring. The turn-based combat I do actually enjoy. But if you're used to turn-based combat games, I can't imagine that this would be anything mind-blowing to you. Uh, but I've been enjoying the turn-based combat. I don't play many turn-based combat games. Different style of battle here. Not being able to use my multiplier, but he has only got a small amount of health. So let's um, hit him with that. Oh, Lush. Lush? I haven't said that word in a long time. <laughs> my nine health. Seven. Damn. Okay. I need to change my scratches, I think. I need ones that can get scratched quicker. Oh, there's no point in using that. So, <laughs> paralyzed doesn't mean much of him, then. Oh. Let's go. Look at that. He didn't even get to spawn people in. Damn! That's how you improve, baby! So, in this regard, it's fun. When, like, the turn-based combat, you know, that is enjoyable. There you go, you're next. So they were setting up for more, but they never got to do it. There we go, working overtime, fighting crime. Now I do need to replay through each episode and do a bunch of stuff, which is what we're going to do right now. So I replayed episode one, getting the only miss but out of the way. It's by far the most boring episode, and I also got two other trophies along the way. Now for this one, there is a quest where there's two trophies related to the quest. So I'm going to have to replay like the same quest twice, which is a little bit annoying, but nothing crazy. Sneak attack. 
Might just be able to absolutely body him with just one. Boom. Oh, there we go. Perfect stranger. Get a triple S ranking in a battle. Damage, defense, and speed all perfect. Let's go. Van Dam. Win 100 battles. <laughs> I can't hear any. Win 100 battles. I have noticed a few references to Jean-Claude Van Damme. Not sure why. Maybe he had some kind of significance in the um, in the development. Who knows? Hey, righteous dude. Scored 200 righteous defenses. Nice. There we go. Maze report. Don't destroy the gruel in episode two. So I need to replay it and do his side. So after doing the episode two, I just got in the zone. All the missables, all the chapter specific, they were mine. I was in that zone. But hold up, we're not just going to gloss over this trophy. There's multiple trophies for hooking Sarah up with different people throughout the chapter. And this one, you hook her up with the whole basketball team. I think we're all thinking the same thing. Now having to replay these same chapters over and over again, especially like chapter three that has five or six missables, you have to do it again and again and again and keep doing the same chapter. I will say you can tell the devs definitely had fun. There are so many references to movies or music from Rick Astley and Never Gonna Give You Up to Tom Cruise and Top Gun. You could tell they did have fun when making this game, but there was far too many optional trophies. Like the missables per chapter was crazy. So I actually don't think I need to play the main game anymore. It's now just arena and endless uh, and depend and then I'll find out whichever's quicker for leveling up because I'm not actually even I'm not even got the trophy for level 20 or 21. So I've just got to win an arena an arena battle. Oh. Oh. I'm not getting many turns, I have to say. They're getting like 5 or 6 before I even get one. There we go. There we go. Thunderdome, even though I can't hear anything. <laughs> Winning arena battle. There we go. Now, before we do Endless, I'm going to go back into just any episode. All right, so time to do Endless battle. I have heard that episode three is the easiest one, so we're going to go with that because I am relatively under-leveled, apparently. I should be, like, level 25 plus, and I'm only, like, 19 or something, I think. I wonder if I can just crack him with one of these. Off-rip. Bang. All right, I don't think I'm going to be getting to wave 15, but beat her for wave 5. Oh, there we go. Minion, defeat wave 5 of endless battles. Now, obviously, that does leave me on low health, a little bit screwed. Damn it. Down we went. Okay, so that was tough, but we got to level 5. So we're level 17, by the way, and there's a trophy for level 50. So I think I'm probably just going to smash through just whatever's the most effective XP strategy. So I decided my next goal before grinding for level 50 would be to collect all 128 scratch and sniff stickers, which actually is pretty easy as all of the box respawn and it is RNG related, which sounds like it would be harder, but it means you could just run the same route where there's a ton of collectible boxes and no fights and then restart the level and keep doing it and doing it and doing it, which is so much easier than following a guy for 128 individual boxes. So I just ran this same route until the trophy popped. I then started with a level 50 grind and got a couple of trophies along the way. I was just doing the same fight over and over again with all XP related stickers and I was leveling up insanely fast. Even at the 40s I was leveling up once every 3 to 4 fights which is a huge step because I completed the whole game and got to level 17. So this felt like I was flying by. So after grinding endlessly for level 50, just before I actually hit level 50 I needed to take a break. So I decided to get this trophy mirror mirror for defeating evil Marty. And this fight was complete and utter bullshit. I cannot stand when turn-based combat resorts to this. He gains randomly two or three turns in a row. Like my turn's coming up next, then he repeats his, he repeats his, he repeats his. There's no reasoning behind it, he just does. Sometimes he can attack three to four times in a row, never runs out of abilities, barely takes any damage. 
I get they wanted a challenge with this one, but you don't need to turn turn-based combat into when they have four to five turns and you have one, especially when it's a 1v1. He didn't have a crew or anything. It was just, it just really ruined what could have been quite a fun and strategic fight and was the only time that I generally sat there and was like, I'm not enjoying this. This feels like it's just kind of cheap. Kind of like when other games have the hardest difficulty and it's just enemies are sponges. It's not a fun challenge, so it's pointless. Right, I've just woke up, had breakfast. Yesterday I played most of the day. I finished the day with about four hours of playing with a massive migraine, which was brutal. I felt so sick, but we are here. We are level 47. We're getting there. There is a good amount of content in this game. Credit where credit is due. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Sensational. And there we go. Lackey. Defeat wave 10 of endless battle. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's, I should be able to kill him in theory, as long as he doesn't transform here. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. For wave 15. There we go. Come on, the baby. Defeat wave 15 of endless battle. Right, this should only take maybe one or two more runs to reach level 50 and the Platinum will be ours. There we go. You're the best. And... Master of the universe. Well, probably not my rarest in terms of platinum, but definitely my rarest in terms of people that actually own this game. And that is what a 100 pound platinum looks like. It still hurts to say. So there we go. A one pound platinum, a 10 pound platinum, and a 100 pound platinum. If I were to add Saturday morning RPG to the tier list, it would be in A for a waste of £100. That being said, I did enjoy the game. And I get this worth £100 because it's a limited run. But I can also kind of see why it didn't sell very well. Obviously, this was a different style of video. So I hope you guys did enjoy it. And I'll uh, catch you all in the next one. Peace.